Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm still here in Nanjing. Um, day four, I'm leaving back to, going back to Xi'an tomorrow on the train. I've had such a great time here. I can't believe I've never been here before, to be honest. It's a wonderful city and it's got this great history, you know. It's regarded as one of China's four great ancient capitals, along with Xi'an, where I live, Luoyang in Henan province and Beijing. But the thing that's probably most known for around the world, especially in modern terms, is, um, you know, the horrors of war, unfortunately. In particular, the Nanjing Massacre, or the Rape of Nanjing, as it's um, often referred to. So yesterday, I visited the, the Memorial Museum to the Nanjing Massacre, and honestly, it made me feel, I felt ill, actually, after I left. It's an incredibly sad, place and um, but I, you know I think I think if you come to the city I think it's important that you visit it to understand something of this this city's more modern and dark history um, it's kind of insane you know when you when you read about what actually happened here in 1937 the city was completely destroyed and obviously hundreds of thousands 300,000 people apparently were murdered during the massacre and um, it's hard to believe that it's this beautiful city that I'm walking around now. So it's a very well-known event obviously um, but for those of you who don't know basically in the summer of 1937 the Imperial Japanese Army invaded China which is often referred to here as the beginning of World War II although you know a little bit different from our more Eurocentric 1939 start date um, and by November the Japanese had actually taken Shanghai in one of the bloodiest battles of the whole war and Nanjing was basically next on the target. Nanjing at that point was the capital of China. So the government at this point moved the capital from Nanjing to Chongqing which is a long way inland in the hope of you know basically trying to draw the Japanese into the country to use their massive country size and population size to hopefully wear them down but they basically knew that Nanjing was unfortunately gonna fall and it did so the Japanese bombed it for weeks and weeks and weeks and then eventually they invaded and as I said you know they reckon 300,000 people were murdered and the museum goes into very 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 graphic detail of this and it's, it's obviously it's very unsettling but you know these things are important to know and you know I've lived in China for a long time and to be honest there is still a lot of hatred is hate the right word resentment maybe of um, of the Japanese amongst people in China and I think the history is still I don't know it's World War II history you know I think it's still fresh for some people anyway it's a it's a really horrific story it's one of the most horrific things and I think the museum is the museum is very it's very tastefully done you know it's um it's very somber obviously but it's a it's an important experience, but honestly, I, I think I did feel... How do I explain? I felt pretty rough leaving it, and for the rest of yesterday as well. I'm still thinking about it now, it was, uh, it's not particularly nice. Now, only 60 years before the horrors of the Nanjing Massacre... Actually, Nanjing was also the scene of another kind of horrible event as well, and that was the Taiping Heavenly Kingdom movement. Now I think this is probably not as well known around the world, uh, outside of China, but the it was a, it was a kind of a Christian movement that basically resulted in wars that, by some estimations, would make it the like the second costliest war to human life ever, only surpassed by World War II, which is insane. And I think a lot of people don't really know about it, and. Nanjing was taken by these um, this, these rebels basically and uh, made into their capital city for 10 years and the city at that time was basically destroyed a lot of these very famous buildings like the porcelain tower of Nanjing which was regarded as one of the wonders of the world at the time was destroyed during this time some of the remains of that are actually in the history museum here and they are very very beautiful um, so these guys came into the city and they declared Nanjing with a new name, and it was called Tianjin, the, the heavenly capital. 
So these wars were started by a guy called Hong Xiu Quan, who <laughs> I guess was basically nuts. And he started a revolution, you know, it's particularly among the, the, the farming class, the working class of uh, rural southern China, um, against the ruling Qing dynasty, the, um, the, the dynasty that was in control of China at the time. And basically just started this massive revolution, which he ended up with like about 30 million supporters, apparently. It's just this crazy thing. And his thing was, he declared himself to be the brother of Jesus Christ. There are a lot of reasons why this came about. Um, basically, the end of the Qing dynasty in China, that was the last imperial dynasty in China before, you know, the Republic of China came into effect. Um, it had been, it was in a bit of a state, like, I suppose, a lot of internal and external problems. Internally, it was very corrupt, and it was a foreign-ruled dynasty. It was the Manchus had invaded China and taken it for, the, for themselves, which obviously had certain resentment amongst um, the, you know, the majority population here. Um, but also, they suffered a lot from foreign intervention, particularly, sadly to say, my own country, the British, the Opium Wars and all that. That's for another video, I think. Anyway, so this guy and his fanatic, crazy kind of Christian following, they took control of Nanjing and made it their capital and murdered every Manchurian in the city. Man, woman and child in some other horrific massacre that occurred here. The wars of the Taiping Heavenly Kingdom, actually they, they affected almost everywhere in China, to be honest almost every province. Um, but mainly it was around here, like the Yangtze River Delta where, like, in the cities here where it was, you know, it was the most brutal fighting. And actually later in the war, the British and the French actually uh, joined forces with the Qing Dynasty to fight against the, uh, the Taiping Heavenly Kingdom for a number of reasons. Firstly, apparently they decided actually these guys are not really Christian, which would have Probably, if, if they were, it might have made us support them, I suppose. And also, you know, they were very much against the sale of opium. So probably that's why as well, unfortunately. So anyway, the leader of this movement, Hong Xiu Chen, the, um, you know, brother of Jesus Christ, he died in 1864. And after him, basically, the movement just collapsed and it was quickly kind of... Yeah, it, it hung on for a few years in like the kind of the, the countryside in the further south, but all of its, its its power like here in Nanjing fell really quickly to the to the Qing forces. The legacy of these wars, however, is is massive. So throughout its history, China's you know suffered from a lot of civil war. In between each dynasty, there was generally massive, massive war um, before whoever the next guys were took over. The difference here was this was not about empire it was um, a movement that was actively opposed to imperialism um, and as a result although this they ultimately failed and were crushed by the Qing dynasty it really weakened the, the whole dynasty the power base was basically gone and obviously not long after that in 1911 in the Xinhai revolution the Qing dynasty was overthrown again by anti-imperialists um, such as people like Sun Zhongshan, Sun Yat-sen um, which led to the end of imperial rule in China you know which had governed here for over 2,000 years Sun Yat-sen, Sun Zhongshan also is buried here in Nanjing uh, his mausoleum is up on the purple gold mountain um, because again, during the Republic of China times, before the rape of Nanjing, um, this was also the capital of that as well. Everything comes full circle. Anyway, that was some pretty horrible history. But nevertheless, I think particularly when, when, when you think about the, um, the, the Nanjing massacre in 1937, it's important history because it's still, it's still so relevant here. People still, it's still talked about a lot, um, 
Chinese people still think about it a lot. They still have a lot of memorial services for it. And it is important to understand something of the history of, of this country, the modern history of this country. Anyway, in the next video I'll talk about rainbows and sunshine, <laughs> I guess. I will be going back to Xi'an tomorrow. Um, I'm not, I'm, I always look forward to going back to Xi'an, but there is something, there is something about this city that I've really enjoyed. I've really enjoyed. More so than most places I visit in China. I, I like everywhere I visit in China, to be honest. I don't think there are any places that I think are terrible, but there's something about this city that I really, really have enjoyed. I could definitely, definitely see myself living here. And that says a lot. Take a lot to take my heart from Xi'an, I think. <laughs> anyway, until next time, guys. All the best. And stay safe and take care. Bye-bye.